Hello everyone, in this video we will learn how to work with dynamic contents in Power Automate. And this is a very important topic because by using these dynamic contents, you'll be able to access any properties from the previous steps in your flow without the need of writing expressions. And if you are new to Power Automate and have no idea about what are expressions at all, you don't have to worry because I will share some relevant links here in the video description. So before we get started, let's quickly check this form that I prepared for this demonstration. This is a pretty straightforward form. This is a customer feedback form where we have only four questions. We have the first name, last name, email address, and the service rating. And the idea here is to capture this form submission and play around with some of the questions. So for example, we will generate a variable into Power Automate to store the email address of the user. And we also have another variable to store the full name of the user. So we will combine the first name and the last name into a single variable which you can do by using these dynamic contents. So let's jump back to Power Automate. And I am already here into the Create a Flow page. If you don't know how to access that, you just have to come to the left side menu and click into Create. And since we want to start our flow from a form submission, we need to select the Automated Cloud Flow. Once you do that, we need to select the correct trigger. We have a lot of options here, but the first one is when a new response is submitted from the Microsoft Forms connector. If you cannot see that into your Power Automate, you just have to search for the trigger over here into this uh, input box. And then we also need to name this flow. So I will put something like dynamic content. Very creative. Now hit create. And that's great. Our flow is created. But I don't know about you, but I don't like that much this new designer. So I will disable that by clicking here on the top right corner. And now we are good to go. So we have this trigger to monitor a form submission, but we need to tell Power Automate which form do we want to track. So if you expand this dropdown here, you will see all of the forms that you have access to into your organization. In my case, I will select the first one. And at this point, we are monitoring a form submission, but we are not capturing any data from the form submission. And for that, we need to include a new step. This step is called uh, get response details. So if you type here, get response, you already uh, see this option from the Microsoft Form Connector over here. Click on that. And now you need to tell Power Automate what is the form from where you want to get this response details. Just select the same form from the trigger. And for the response ID, this is the first moment where we will actually use the dynamic contents into this video. So the response ID, it will vary according to each form submission. Each of these uh, submissions, they will receive an unique ID, and you have no way to know that if you are working with an automated flow. So the solution for it is to capture this information for the trigger. The trigger has this information. Whenever the form is submitted, Power Automate captures this ID. And to access that into a later step, you have to simply click into this input box. And once you do that, this new pane will appear. And here you have a list of all of the available dynamic contents. For this specific use case, you have only one dynamic content. You can see that we have the trigger here, the when a new response submitted. And the dynamic content is related to the response ID property. Uh, actually, this trigger has other properties, but we are seeing only one because this input for the response ID in the get response details is expecting a number. If I add a text here, it probably will uh, complain that they are expecting a valid integer. Integer is an integer number. So if I remove here this text and simply click into the response ID dynamic content, you see that automatically we populate the input with this data. So we are good for now. We could save the flow and make a form submission to test it. But before that, let's just add two variables to store the user email address and the user full name. And for that, we just need to click a new step. And then we type initialize variable. And we have this option here. Let's call this variable as email address, very original. And for the type, let's select a string. A string is basically a text. And for the value, just like we did for the response ID, you can simply click into this input field and you'll see all of the available contents. And right now, uh, as I told you at the beginning of the video, the dynamic contents allow you to access all of the properties from the previous steps. And since we have a new previous step, which is the get response details, we can now see that we have a lot of properties to access here, which includes, for example, the email address 
uh, that is captured from the response submission from the user. So let's simply click into this email address and now we are going to go to the next variable. So we repeat the process. And this variable, we can name it as full name because we'll store the first and the last name of the user that submits the form. Let's set the type as a string as well. And for the value, once we click over there, you can see that we have the email address variable also in the dynamic content list. That's because this email address is also a previous step on the flow and we could be using that to populate this second variable if you wanted to. But for this use case, we just need to select the first name and then we can add a blank space here. And finally, we can click into the last name, dynamic content, and that's it. We are now good to save the flow and test it. And once the flow is saved, I will now make a form submission. So I'll simply come here and type Harry Potter, the email will be Harry at digitalmail.net. And Harry really enjoyed our services, so he gave us a five star. Click submit. And now if you come back to Power Automate and you can simply click into this, uh, go back to previous page, but I will open that into a new tab. And here into the main flow page, you can see that in the history, you already have a first submission 12 seconds ago, this submission was succeeded. And if you access that, and again, I will remove this insider. And now we can expand, for example, the get response details. You will see all of the, uh, answers that the user provided us with. So we have the rating, we have the first name, we have the last name, we have the email address, and we also have our two variables. For the email address, we have the same email provided into the form submission. And for the full name, as expected, we have a combination between the first and the last name. So that's it. And if you want to learn more about Power Automate, you can check the links that I shared in the video description, where you can also find a link to my free Power Automate course. See you in the next video.